Already facing an uncertain future, the inner ring suburb of Euclid was hard hit by the foreclosure crisis. Over a quarter of homes in the city faced foreclosure, and those that remained faced on average a 60% loss of value. The Euclid Square Mall, once a regional draw, was completely vacant by 2013. Decimated property values and loss of commercial activity led to dwindling tax revenues for the city. But over the last six years, Euclid has begun to turn the corner. It started when city leaders began looking at what was right about Euclid instead of what was wrong. Growing up on the lakefront was awesome. My parents live right on the lake, so we had a beach in our backyard. We were able to go down to the beach. We learned to swim. I want other residents, and I think we as a community want other residents to be able to have that same access, even if you don't live directly on the lake. There are rivers in which bacteria have been estimated at 1,500 times human safety level. There was a time when Cleveland and its suburbs turned their backs on Lake Erie. The lake was so contaminated with industrial waste and sewage that it was considered unhealthy to go even near it. That has changed over time, yet cities like Euclid were not designed with the idea of making the lakefront accessible. We've really looked at our lakefront and how do we capitalize on that asset and make the most of it. So we're really excited to begin uh, phase two of our lakefront waterfront improvement project that will be a three-quarter mile multi-purpose trail opening up unprecedented access to the lake and really strengthening the neighborhood surrounding and the whole community. What makes Euclid's project unusual is the fact that most all of its lakefront property is privately owned. Even with federal grants to build the trail, the city had no money to pay lakeshore owners for access. But because the project addresses a critical and costly issue for these residents, it didn't need to. Right along here and out to the lake, which went down a cliff, was all even land. We started to see what I thought were like these mini earthquake craters that actually was from the rains and the trees literally being uprooted from the waves coming across the dirt itself. To be able to groom the bluffs and prevent further erosion is a plus. We all knew we'd be losing some privacy and the reason we bought our homes and our land was for the privacy in the lake. We all know the best thing for the city is greater access to the water. Everybody around the United States is trying to do that not everybody has the buy-in. The buy-in from the homeowners was the value that Euclid was able to capture from its public investments. In return, their property values will benefit, as may those of the whole town. Home values are an important part of building a community. Euclid was hit very hard by the foreclosure crisis. We believe the lakefront project and those type of public investments really help pave the way for future growth in our property values. Euclid's close proximity to Cleveland is another example of what used to be a disadvantage turning into an asset. We've seen a major transformation in downtown Cleveland, and I think Euclid being right next to Cleveland is poised to benefit from that as well. Even the site of the Euclid Mall, once a symbol of the city's decline, has turned into an asset. In need of a large, inexpensive property close to Cleveland, Amazon chose to demolish the abandoned mall and build a giant new fulfillment center at that location. We've really worked very hard to focus on the assets. Not just look at the problems and what are we going to do about them, but what are our assets, what are our strengths, and how do we build on that? 